Hi guys, I hope you're doing very well. This video is sponsored by Match Bingo. Match Bingo is an easy way of having fun uh, when it comes to betting on the football. Now, think of bingo, but without numbers. So rather than having 10, 12, 5, you would have corners, yellow cards, and goals, for example. And that would be an example of a line. Now, you can win up to £175 each game with Match Bingo. There are some games you can win more. And spend is only capped at £2. All right. So if you're worried about not playing responsibly, this is probably a good game for you. I do just want to give these guys a, a little bit of appreciation as well. Because 35% of, of the money they make actually goes to the Stroke Association. Which um, is really, really good, to be fair. Um, I don't know many companies that do that. Let me know what you guys think. Click the link in the description and uh, make sure you're over 18 as well. And let me know if you guys win any money. It'll be interesting to see uh, how lucky Chelsea fans are. Hopefully, we're more lucky than we are on the pitch. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV and welcome to another episode of Round the Corner, the show where I look ahead to Chelsea's next fixture, which in this case is a trip to the Emirates to face Arsenal. Following heartbreak at Wembley just literally two days ago against Manchester City when our FA Cup dream was stripped and destroyed, we are now back to league action in hopes to cause some upset. Chelsea now have only one way of securing Europe and that's through the league, you know, the one where results have been up and down left right and centre we've been so unpredictable so inconsistent but we have tough games to end this season and all we have to do now is just fight for every three points we can get but that being said Arsenal are in a title race and they have not been very nice to the teams that have visited the Emirates this season a tough team to face um however it's a London derby we turned up for it once at Stamford Bridge this season can we do it again is the question however we have been informed that it's going to be much more difficult as we are potentially facing our two fullbacks in the names of Ben Chilwell and Malo Gusto out due to injury with a question mark on Cole Palmer as well who is uh, facing an illness at the moment and his availability tomorrow is uncertain <clears throat> so there are concerns there are concerns but before we get into the uh, game against Arsenal before I get into the details of how we might line up and what to expect I want to take a moment to honour one of our very own one of our most special players to grace Chelsea Football Club um, Thiago Silva I am so sad guys and I'm sure that you all are sad and just opening my Twitter today to see that Thiago Silva is officially leaving just burst the bubble I was living in. You know, the one where I just thought he'd be here forever and he wouldn't leave. The dreaded day has come. You know, after last season when he signed another year, I was so happy. We were all so happy because regardless whether he has come is coming to the end of his you know best footballing years and in terms of what he can offer as a footballer he has been such a leader so important in the dressing room I do not doubt there's a single player at Chelsea or a single person that works at Chelsea that doesn't value Silva he's just incredible I'm talking as if we have been friends forever but it feels that way um but honestly there are not enough words to say how amazing he has been how loyal how dedicated he's always left everything on the pitch and I've always said oh, I feel like crying guys but I've always said that if our players can have half as much of the qualities that Thiago Silva possesses moving forward we're going to be fine because it's so hard to come by nowadays where a footballer loves the club he plays for plays with a badge is so sincere in every action on the pitch off the pitch has such a strong relationship with the fans and always has put us first you know he's always explained himself he's always apologized he's always expressed his gratitude and frankly, that is exactly, uh, yeah, the dream relationship you want to have with the players at your club. Um, so it's just incredibly sad. But we have to just remember all the good things that he did for us, how he's picked us literally up from pits and won trophies, lifted trophies. And now we know why the tears at Wembley on Saturday were so upsetting because he missed out on potentially 
playing and lifting one more trophy at Chelsea Football Club, which would have been the best rap to his uh, career at Chelsea for the last four years. But unfortunately, it doesn't always go your way. But I wish him all the best. We love him unanimously. It's not also common these days where fans love a player unanimously like players divide opinion in fan bases all the time and it happens a lot particularly at Chelsea right with how much change we've gone through in the last years um to have that one loyal guy there regardless of what he's always yeah been been there uh and been great so thank you so much Thiago Silva <laughs> don't know if you're ever gonna hear this but all the fans um love you so much true legend leader all of that captain without the armbands just amazing but anyways guys i just wanted to take that moment to talk about silver because he's just yeah anyways been incredible um all the memories right there um but let's get into the emirates stadium trip because we'll be there guys we will be there uh, tough place to go. Like I said, no means an easy game, but it is a chance to redeem ourselves potentially, cause some chaos. Um, and I'm sure Arsenal won't underestimate us because we may have been poor all round. Our performances may have been abysmal at times, but we have been competitive with the top teams. Yeah, we haven't beaten them necessarily, not been the best records, but we have come toe to toe, you know, almost beat Man City after drawing twice to them in the league this season so we have proven that we can fight however i just hope that we can channel all of that anger and disappointment that is left over from saturday into these games and see just how serious these players are about playing in europe this season um pochettino i don't doubt is gonna set us up again in a way that we can maximize the output on the pitch because like i said we've got injuries but we're still going to have to to come out with something. So let's talk about the lineup. I think in terms of our defensive line, apart from obviously Malo Gusto's absence, it stays the same. Marco Carella, Trevor Chalabert and Thiago Silva, of course, in the centre-back duo, because I thought they looked pretty good on the most part. Uh, you know, I mean, they did what they could defensively. I think Trev as well did a fantastic job um, on the most part. And he's obviously a very precious player as well, um, has been mistreated at times at the club but equally I know that he wants to prove himself in that role whether his future at the club is uh certain or not I think he is wanting to fight for every minute of playing time he can get and frankly right now we're not spoiled for choice with our centre-backs um particularly because one of them is gonna have to play as a right back and that is of course, going to be disaster, isn't it? Because Malagos is injured, Reese James we know is injured, and my goodness, where would we have been without Malagos this season? And I truly think we have tired him out. We have sponged every single strength that he has this season because he's been so useful. He's been so great, stepped up big time in the boots of um, to fill the boots of Reese James, which is never an easy job. And unfortunately, we're really going to miss him because against Arsenal, he was crucial. Um, obviously, Mark Carella played that game as well, but Chilwell being absent doesn't leave much choice, really. So, yeah, I think that's how we set up. And I do worry. I do worry about that right hand side because, yeah, you're just not sure. You know, Arsenal have a lot of threat on their wings uh, up front. And also, they have had a series of goal scorers this season. So, you're not too sure where they punish you and how. Moving into midfield, I don't think it's a secret to anyone, Enzo and Caicedo. Enzo, another name that was really heavily scrutinised, discussed, uh, particularly after our Wembley trip, has been discussed all season pretty much. Um, when you do cost nearly 250 million combined with your partner in crime in midfield, you're going to be scrutinised a lot, particularly by rival fans, but also by Chelsea fans, because perhaps they have not lived up this season to what we anticipated them or maybe have liked them to. And again, I can bring a lot of context into this, but Again, what we've seen on the pitch in terms of output perhaps has lacked. Enzo, we do know, is playing potentially through um, an injury and he's obviously got a problem which needs to be addressed and is perhaps the reason why is inhibiting his game on the pitch as well a little bit. So I'm not too sure about that, but 
and they've got a chance to come up against you know a midfield that has really been flourishing this season um at Arsenal so it will be interesting to see how they cope uh big question there so I do understand why there may be concerns but these are the games where they can now really prove that there is potential there that they can control a game and really help us out because we're going to need to be very uh, slick. Transition from the back line into midfield into our forwards is going to have to be very snappy. No mistakes made, um, otherwise we will be punished. And again, it's just we're going to be punished for our own mistakes. Um, and of course, Conor Gallagher, because there is no game uh, that, you know, Pochettino will leave Conor Gallagher out of. That is absolutely, you know, it's basically his ride or die. So Gallagher is obviously in there. And my thinking is that maybe Pochettino might do something a little bit crazy if Cole Palmer's not um, available, which I really hope he is because we're going to need him. Uh, you know, a clinical touch. Yes, please. We're going to need it. Um, but, you know, we've seen that Mudrick has played in 10 before. Um, I don't know if Poch is going to be up for some crazy gamble again with Gallagher as a winger, but I'm not too sure. Either way, though, if Palmer doesn't start, then I think we're going to see Gallagher. We're definitely going to see Raheem Sterling back as well. He had a few minutes um, against Manchester City this weekend, and I think he starts this game. Again, I think Pochettino has made it clear that he still relies on Raheem Sterling for these big games. Against Man City, best game probably uh, for us when he played against Manchester City. Um off the top of my head, he has turned up uh, against the bigger, better teams, maybe. He goes into hiding against the other ones, but yeah, I guess that's a conversation for a different day. But his experience, we keep talking about it. Maybe we've not seen it enough. It's been inconsistent. But Raheem Sterling, if you want to turn up, if you want to redeem yourself, mate, this is the game. Please, come on. You've played against Arsenal. Show him how it's done. I beg. Anyways, um... Nicholas Jackson and Noni Madweke, yes. Right, let's have a conversation about Nicholas Jackson and Noni Madweke. I don't know why I had mind blank there, but um, let's talk about Jackson because Jackson, rightfully, in my opinion, um, was criticised for not finishing the chances that he missed at Wembley, which potentially could have put us in a much better place in terms of getting something out of the Sissy game. Um, he missed a handful of chances and it just simply wasn't good enough. Now, my opinion on Jackson is I think he's a he's a really good footballer. You know, don't get it twisted. I think he's a good footballer. He's improved a lot. I've been his biggest criticizer this season as well because there's been games where I've just questioned how on earth you know, are you playing at a senior level as you are and not managing to put simple chances away? And then other games, I've seen good link-up play. I've seen good hold-up play. I've seen a good attitude. And I thought, okay, great, you're hungry. But it's just maybe you're lacking the quality in the end product there. And I think that's exactly what we saw against Man City. And it was just a shame because Jackson finished one of those chances, mate. And it's a different story. But it just didn't happen. And I came up with the conclusion and the inference that I just don't think Jackson tried trusts himself very much but Jackson and I know that he likes these London derbies I know that he likes to well he scored a hat trick against Tottenham didn't he but I think he does turn up and rise to the occasions where he wants to prove himself he likes to be a bit of a joker doesn't he he likes to be loved and appreciated by the fans so judging on that I know his attitude is there I don't question it I just think he cares 100% cares I just think the quality lacks there a little bit however he's got a chance to redeem himself as well look at that guy so much chance for redemption at the Emirates um I don't know false hope is it I'm not too sure but I like I'm going to the game I'm not going to the game in fear that Arsenal are going to thrash us you know I have a little bit of hope at the end of the day I just want a good performance at the end of the day you know and I just repeat that twice um Arsenal are in a title race they are hungry every game from here on counts they cannot drop any more points they basically gave Man City a bit of leeway when they drop points and they're not going to want to do that again um for them it's literally every game needs to be killed and it's exactly what they're going for Chelsea we've struggled with mentality a lot of the times this season but I'm hoping that for this one yeah, we, we turn up. 
Uh, but that being said, I think he is going to give a chance for Nani Madueke to start just because I think he favours Madueke over Madrick starting. I'm not too sure. Maybe he thinks Madrick's a bit more effective as a super sub, even though he didn't really manage to influence the game very much um, against Manchester City. But yeah, guys, that's how I think we'll set up. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything uh, in the comments down below. Of course, hit the like button and subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV if you haven't done so already. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can go there and leave everything on the pitch, perform well. Um, and regardless, we know that this season has been up and down. We have been beaten. It's not going to be embarrassing, but it is a London derby at the end of the day. And I just want us to go and turn up and give them a game. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching.